Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My name is uh, Wasim Rashid, and today we uh, I'm going to present and talk about this chapter 104 of Quran called Surah Al Hamza. This is one of uh, the shortest surah, so I will just take my time. In preparation of this surah, these are few of the references which I have used. And this is the contact number which you can actually use if in need of any query or question. So first of all, talking about this surah, as I described that this is one of the small surah. And uh, Allah has talked about few things about the human behavior in this and its consequences. So the main points which we will see, the first one is the bad behavior, conduct and wrong thinking of human beings. The results of these bad behavior at individual and collective level. Nature of these results according to Allah's law. Allah has mentioned the word al-afida for heart in this surah. This is a special point which we will be discussing a little bit more in detail. And Allah's law and human self from cognitive and emotions point of view. And the effect of these results on human self and society. Now the first verse starts with I have color coded a little bit to make it understandable for everyone that red color means the same color in English sort of translation. So this is one of the translation which is which states woe unto every slanderer and fault finder. Now Allah has started this surah talking about two uh, human behavior. One is slanderer and fault finder. And this Alama Parvez has described in such a way. This is a description from Quran with Lugat, with Lugat of Alama Parvez saying, O Rasul, explicitly tell these people that a person whose only aim is in life is to amass wealth and then keep on counting how much as he collected, this becoming his main purpose in life, develops a tendency of finding 101 fault with any reformer who stands up to criticize the capitalist system. He even slanders such a reformer, make all this effort mainly to cause a split among his followers. The mentality of such a person become like this, that if there appears some reformer in the nation who states something against the capitalist system, then he will bring out hundreds of faults in him, will criticize, will resort to acquisition and blame game. He will try to create dissension among his companion. The second ayat is Allah zi jama malam vaddada. Actually, it should be read with in conjunction with the first ayat, which is Vailulle kulle humazatil maza Allah zi jama malam vaddada. This verse means who amasses wealth and keeps counting it. Now, this word, which is Allah zi, joins the first word, first uh, verse. Two verses are combined as what is stated in the first verse. The second verse is the cause of it. Under the capitalist system, the capital accumulates in few hands. And as a result, imbalance is created in a nation. And as of today, it is across the world. This imbalance leads to the creation of yatim. Now, yatim means left alone and isolated in society. And maskeen, and maskeen means stranded, static, due to poverty and deprivation. This cannot continue forever. Here the Quran 
declares that such a system is bound to come to an, an end. See, the, the system which does not uh, take care of yatim and maskin, it has to come to an end. And Quran is uh, telling that thing. Masses ultimately stand up against it in Surah 83, 6, verse 6. Now, these two verses point to the state of affair where people who try to oppose the evil system, how they are treated, we can see it in our world clearly even today, that is 2023. In another place, in it is stated in 17, uh, Surah 1780, Vajama Fa. The ayah, they accumulate and then hide it. Now that's the wealth that Allah is talking about. We can see how the capitalists hide their money. Currently, you must have heard, everyone must have heard, offshore accounts, hidden properties and land. Hidden accounts in, accounts in Switzerland, share stocks, gold, diamonds. Their hiding means that they know, know it, it is wrong. That is why they hide it, and this affects their self and its development. Now, coming to these words which Allah has used in these two ayats, the strong word, the first one is humaza. Let's have a closer look into that. Humaza has a root word which is ha, mim, and ze, za, and its possible meaning are defamer or slanderer. al hammers to pinch, to push, and beat, to bite. And al hammers means to ring or backbite. Its basic meaning is to press or ring humaza. And hamaza, one who finds fault. That is the dictionary meaning of hamaza. Now, slanderer, a slanderer is a person who spreads false or malicious statement about someone with the intent to harm their reputation. Slander is a form of defamation, which involves making false statements that damage a person's reputation or cause them to, the, to be shunned or avoided by the others. Slander can make take many forms such as making false accusation, spreading rumors, or intentionally misrepresenting someone's word or action. The statement made by a slanderer are usually damaging and can cause harm to person being targeted, both personally and professionally. The second word is lumaza. Lumaza had a root meaning, a root word lam, mean, and za. And its possible meanings are backbiter, insult, criticize, criticize. That is in, uh, used in Quran. Now, al lamas actually it means to indicate with eye, head, or lips and say something secretly or to criticize to the face. Some also <coughs> say it means backbiting. Whereas lamaza, a man who backbites and instigate two friends against each other. Ibn Farasis basically means a fault. Now backbiting, backbiting is the act of speaking negatively about someone behind their back. It involves gossiping or spreading rumor about someone when they are not present, often with the intent of harming their reputation or causing other to think less of them. Backbiting can involve any type of negative commentary, such as criticizing their behavior, appearance, or personal life. Backbiting is generally considered to be a negative behavior and is often seen as a form of betrayal, as the person who is being talked about is usually unaware of what is being said and unable to defend themselves. Backbiting can damage relationships, create a toxic environment, and erode trust between people. Another word which is used is mal. Now, the mal has the root meaning of meme, vow, and lam. 
and its possible meaning uh, is wealth, properties, capital, or wealth of Allah. There are quite a few other words, uh, the meaning, possible meanings, but they all wrap around these three or four words. Now, mal means gold and silver in your possession or a collection of things in your possession also came to be called mal. However, the Arabs used to call their flock of camels as mal because they were wealth to them. Other use which is used is uh, adada in this uh, the two ayats. And this root meaning is an, dal, and dal. And their possible meaning is prepare, number, count, waiting period or number. Now, actually, the essence of these two verses are, we can summarize, the proliferation of the wealth is necessary for establishing the divine system. But the wealth that is under the control of the system of sustenance for the entire nation and is every individual collects wealth for his individual benefit under the man-made system, then that wealth continues to prepare hellfire whose flames engulf the heart. Now that is a bit of summarization of the further when we'll go into the surah. This creates imbalance in the society. The Quran has been sent to the humanity to eliminate the capitalist system and replace it with the deen. The permanent value of the system of deen is that reward is for the word, work, not for the capital. Now let's see a little bit into the human behavior as mentioned in the and as an individual this behavior if it is not in the line of uh, the guidance of Allah we call it share and that share I am representing with a rectangular box behind in red color and that is representing in Quran is amalat minsu or bad behavior. Now in this surah there are mention of slanderers, backbiters, scandal mongers, wealth hoarders, keep wealth counting, and then thinking and believes that this will help him to live forever. Now the repercussion of this bad behavior, these are the few, as just mentioned in the previous slide, few of the bad behaviors, which are called amalatam and or bad deeds. The word which is used is well, well means destruction, the people who do these things. And destruction means, this word is used to express pain and sadness or punishment and misery or a bad result. After the veil is used, lakul, all of them. And lakul means all the parts of element of a thing that is or the total. That means lakul could be used for cylinder because cylinder could be a huge variety in them. Similarly, backbiter, like an individual, that's a part of those. But lakul could be used cylinder plus backbiters or cylinder plus backbiter and plus scandal mongers or even a little bit more, three or four of them. So that means why Allah has used this word lakul, that it is not only for homaza or not only for lomaza, but it could be all of them, those, those people, are either they have a bit of it or all of it. And for all of them, the word is used, veil, which is destruction. That gives an idea because these uh, two eyes are very simple in wording, but they have very deeper meaning. And that's what I try to explain a little bit. Now, let's see what is good and bad behavior in society and action and their consequences. As an individual, we have seen, if he goes with the guidance of Allah, we call it khair. And 
I'm representing with that individual with a box of green color as a hair, the person who do the hair results in good behavior. And Quran have Jews, it will hasanat. And that hasanat are called the amalat min khair or amale saleha. Now that amale saleha results goes into society because eventually an individual and society have a relationship. However, if that person does not go in the line of guidance from Allah, that will result into shar. And as previously shown, this person is represented bad behavior with the red color around it. That's a bad behavior, which is called the sayyat or amalat minsu. And that also affect the society. Now these both actually affect the society and that's the good or bad behavior and the individual and society actually work. And these few of the phrases we have seen and we will see at various places of Quran, which it talks about sometimes khair, sometimes shir, hasanat and other <laughs> terminology. The same thing for behavior and consequences within the individual and the society. If a person is a bad, as I've shown, that individual will affect the society. It will result have an impact on the society. But the society will have an effect on that individual in the same color, which is the bad behavior. If a, an individual do something wrong to the society, it will affect the society and eventually that is going to haunt that individual as well. However, if a person do the right thing, it is going to affect the society, but society will have a good impact on that individual. So it is a circle between the individual and society and we have to keep that thing in mind that why these behaviors are important in terms of individual and society. Now let's see a little bit more in detail in bad behavior in society action and sequences that what sort of effects. I'm taking the bad behavior which is in red and what happens, it decreases trust and cooperation. Bad behavior can erode trust and cooperation in the society. It makes difficult to build relationships, work together and solve problems effectively. Bad behavior reduces safety and security, like through violence, theft or vandalism, can compromise the safety and security of individual and communities. It can create a climate of fear and insecurity and lead to increased crime rates and social instability. What about economic cost? Harassment, discrimination and criminal behavior can lead to increased policing and incarceration cost and lost revenue from businesses and tourism. That's a huge economic cost. Then the psycho psychological and emotional effects. Exposure to violence and harassment can cause trauma, anxiety, and depression, while chronic exposure to disruptive or aggressive behavior can cause stress and emotional exhaustion. Undermine values and norms. Bad behavior can undermine the values and norms that are essential for a healthy and functioning society. Behaviors that are harmful or unethical can erode the sense of shared responsibility and accountability that is necessary for a thriving community. Now, these are the few of the uh, effects on the society due to the bad behavior. Now, let's see what does the good behavior affect the society. If the behavior is good, how it affects the individual and society, trust and cooperation. 
Good behavior such as honesty, respect, and kindness can foster trust and cooperation among members of society. Safety and security, good behavior such as following laws and respecting other rights can promote safety and security within society. Economic cost, good behavior can have economic benefits for society such as honesty, integrity, and professionalism can lead to increased productivity, employees' retentions, and customer satisfaction. Psychological and emotional effects, good behavior can have positive psychological and emotional effects on individual and communities such as increased well-being, happiness, and social support. Values and norms, good behavior can reinforce the value and norms that are essential for a healthy and functioning society. For example, respect for diversity, compassion, and social responsibility can promote a sense of shared responsibility and accountability. Now, these are only in the few benefits and bad effects on the society of good and bad behavior. Now, coming to the next verse, which is Yasabu Anmalahu Akhad. It has to be read in conjunction with the previous two ayat. Now this verse means thinking that this wealth will make him live forever. Mind it, Allah zi jama malam dada. In the previous verses that those people who accumulate wealth and keep it counting, they think that this wealth will make them live forever. And that is described by Alama Parvez. If things like this, then his assumption is batil, which is batil means false, which produce destructive results. This possession of his will be thrown into destruction of hell like a worthless thing, which will smash it into pieces and this way it will be of no use. This is another reference, and it is the same reference, same sort of theme is coming up in the asking these people, does he think that this wealth will save him from the troubles of or eternity? Wrong deeds affect our psyche, which then creates fear of death. That is another effect on the psyche that if you are going to accumulate wealth and keep it uh, counting and not letting it spread and thinking that this wealth will resolve all of your issues and will be there forever, that's wrong. And that's what has been mentioned up till now. Let's see this uh, word a little bit, uh, this uh, verse a little bit more into this. Yasabu. This word, it has a root uh, of ha, seen, and ba. And this uh, possible meaning are to think, account, sufficient, reckoning, mayor, and thought. Hisbana, to think, to have the opinion. These are the dictionary meanings. Asib, one of the meaning uh, derivative from this root word. Someone who counts. Hasbunallah, Allah, Allah's laws are enough for us. 959. With him there, we do not need anything else. He shall suffice to meet all of our needs. And Hasib is one of the word that's a noun, one who counts or administrator. The time of the result being made known and being called Yomun Hisab, the day of reckoning, that is in 1441. The other, the next word which is used is akhlada. Akhlada have a root word khe, lam, and dal, and it has a possible meaning of abide forever, abiding forever, abide for eternity. Khulud means perpetuate, perpetuate it, and khulud, therefore, it also means the for something to stay as it is for a long period, whether it stays that way 
always or not. Al-Khawalid means mountains, rocks and stone because they always stay in the same state. Quran has used this word khulud both for the Jannah and Jahannam. The khulud of Jannah is eternal life, which is the life which completes its different evolutionary stages and move ahead. And the Jahannam's Khulud is the stage where human capabilities and evolution comes to stand still and life becomes unable to complete the evolutionary stages and becomes stagnant. Therefore, this Khulud is like the mountains and the rock. Details of these points can be found at different places in the Quran. Now, this uh, defines that what does Khulada mean in, in this uh, verse. The next, which is the fourth verse in the surah, is Kalla la yumbezanna fil hutama. Nay, but in the life to come, such as he shall indeed be abandoned to crushing torment. And al hutama means crushing torment. That's Salama Yusuf Ali has described this in hutama, that which smashes or breaks to pieces. And at description of the three antisocial vice condemned for scandal mongering and backbiting, make any sort of cohesion or mutual con confidence impossible. And the misers hold block up the channels of economic services, service and charity, and the circulation of goodwill among men. Now that's the same thing if that person thinks like this, then his assumption is batil. This possession of his will be thrown into the destruction of hell like a worthless thing, which will smash it into pieces and this way it will be of no use. The next sent, uh, verse is Vama Adra Kamal Hotama, which means and what could make thee conceive what that crushing tor torment will be? Narullah il Mokada, which is the sixth verse, and that means a fire kindled by Allah. Now, up till now, these six verses, these are very simple verses where two or three words are there, and up till now, I have described those words a little bit more. The same procedure I'm going to take it for these two verses. We'll be describing a little bit more detail what is Adraq and Al Hotama or Narla and Mokada. So that we do have a deeper understanding that why Allah used these words. See, like this word Adraq, Allah could have chosen something else like Ilam or why Nar and other things. Let's have a little bit understanding of that. Adarak, its root meaning is from Dal, Ra and Ya. And as you can see, there are so many times it's been used. Its possible meaning is to know, make know, can make know, depending upon the way it comes, but uh, it gives you the essence of this word uh, being used in Quran. Quran say Vama Adraq, which means do you know or has somebody made you aware? It always follows with an explanation. See, wheresoever is uh, Adraq comes, Allah is telling, do you know? But then sure that there is an explanation. So this means that after Mahadraka knowledge about the thing has been positively given. That thing is always given after the Adraq. So from Adraq, this word al hotama is described. The, do you know what is hotama? Hotama, its root meaning is he, to, and mean. And it has come six times. And its possible meanings are debris, crusher, or less crushed. al hotam means to break no matter how. Al Hotama also means intense fire which burns everything down to its ashes 
it is also used for a shepherd who oppresses his flock now al hotama a number of uh, time it's been conceived as an alternative synonymous to jahannam in my previous uh, talk that was on surah taqasir there's word which came as jahim and i explain it that it's a staying hold this hotama which is also referred to jahannam or hell but you know the meaning it comes a little bit more or less the same but it refers to that fire which burns or smashes and there are few other things like uh, this word nar nar is also used for it's a characteristic of for jahannam is not a name for the jahannam or the hell but it's a characteristic nar come from the root noon waw and ra and it has used 194 times in the quran and it, here it means fire the word like annar nur or almunir its possible meanings are fire light and lightning shining illuminating or allah's light reflecting light nar is a flame it can be seen a flame if it can be seen that is called the nar a nur nur is the thought to be the good and nar has the element of hatred and frustration they came from the same root noon waure but Nur means a totally different thing from the Nar. Nar is referred in various ways in Quran as a mode of mode and place of retribution for wrongdoers, like Nar e Jahannam, Azab al Nar, or like Waulai ka Azab al Nar um fiha Khalidun. Now this word here in this verse is used as Nar Allah. which is a fire by allah it's a common uh, understanding but actually it is a fire which is through the allah's law fire by allah means the retribution of wrong doers as a result of allah's law it is based on the same principle of phrase inshallah which also means it is the will of allah according to his laws then the word almuqada which is wauka in the and it means kindled wakad fire and for the fire to be bright and wakud the wood which is used to start a fire now these are the uh, dictionary meanings of uh, which has been used and because these the verses which has been used these words are not very long verses so one can easily understand if they know the basic meaning of this coming to the next verse which is seventh allati tatla ala al afida which will rise over the hearts of the guilty one now what allah is talking about narullah al muqada that fire which is kindled by the allah's law will rise tatla in urdu we use the talu talu e aftab or sunrise which rises alal afida afida allah has used here the hearts for the hearts in arabic alaf fida is for the heart this fire of punishment mounts right up to the heart and minds of such men and shuts them out of the love of their fellows heart heart in arabic means not only the seat of affection pity charity etc but also of understanding and inter- intelligent appreciation of things that's the description from yusuf ali in this verse allah has mentioned the fire which engulfs the heart consider if we are in a state of disappointment despair grief anger rage or even fear then these emotion feels to rise from our heart and engulf the whole body that's a common thing which all the human being faces these emotions are referred here that rise over the heart 
the person whose heart is engulfed with these negative emotion cannot think rationally for even a moment or so the thinking faculty is overcome by the emotion of <coughs> these natures modern research suggests that the heart and cognitive processes are interconnected through the autonomic uh, nervous system which regulates body functions such as heart rate blood pressure and respiration the heart also contains a complex network of neuron called the heart brain neuron which communicate with the brain and plays a role in regulating emotions and cognitive processes now that's the word which uh, i'm going to you uh, explain a little bit more on afeda as i said alfeda means heart quran has used qalb and fawad to mean the heart al afeda the plural of the fawad the heart is called fawad because it beats a lot when emotions are in question then fawad will be used and qalb would be used when the mind is in reference these things are related to emotions not thoughts but as mentioned above this division of qalb and fawad is not a rule but are used to mean the heart in the quran it must be seen with reference to context at which point intellect and thoughts are meant and at which point emotions are ref referred the mind because it concludes whatever the senses have informed it about and emotion because if the information provided by the senses is affected by emotions then man can never draw a right conclusion this is why quran has let stress on the use of both to develop conviction in the revelation this means to evaluate and analyze the fact using the intellect and reasoning and to use emotion for what to get it accomplished this is all in reference to the quranic values now coming back to this i uh, just wanted to add a little bit that uh, see that uh, the whole of quran has used these words and it is all about using your human faculties intellect and why this color and uh, fawad is being used is been described here that what are the role of emotions and the intellect i will describe it a little bit further more let's go into man and behavior let's see once again that's the individual and as previously in my previous uh, description of uh, surah takasur human being have three main faculties physical body which i am calling it the physical body taking action all limbs and other things then it's a mind and heart which have cognitive processes and emotions and then the third faculty is human self which quran has called nafs a combination of these develops action and that action results into good or bad and that's our behavior so that three faculties is some of the time only one faculty can produce some action and these two then they are interdependent on each other and eventually is the nafs now let's see heart mind heart and emotions in a little bit more detail that's the individual that's a mind and heart now mind is these are i've combined it together mind is about the cognitive processes which are such as perception attention memory and thinking while the heart is about emotions which are feelings such as happiness sadness fear or anger and that's the emotions and these two result into action and behavior now mind it emotions are a huge subject and emotions we cannot just relate to heart emotions are a whole body process like if you fear or if you feel cold that creates some emotion that's a physiological response and which cause emotion then there are neurological brain activity which can create emotion like your 
memory, which is using the different uh, neurological connections and create emotions. And cognitive, obviously, that cognitive processes create emotions. So emotions are a whole body process as well, but the main root is heart and the mind. Let's go into a little bit more detail. Now that's what I have described resulting into behavior. Cognition and emotions are closely linked and influence each other in a variety of ways. Cognition refers to mental process such as perception, attention, memory, and thinking, while emotions ref refers to feeling such as happiness, sadness, fear, and, en and anger. Cognition and emotions can work together to regulate our behavior and responses to situation. For example, our ability to regulate our emotions, such as using cognitive reappraisal or positive self-talk, can help us cope with challenging situations and reduce negative emotions. And that's the crux. Cognition and emotions are interdependent and influence each other in a variety of ways. Now, going into emotions and behavior, see that behavior with that word motivation. Emotion can serve a powerful motivator for behavior. Positive emotions such as happiness or excitement can motivate individuals to engage in behavior that will bring them pleasure or reward, while negative emotions such as fear or anxiety can motivate individuals to avoid situations that they perceive as threatening or dangerous. Learning. Emotions can influence the learning process. For example, emotion can enhance memory, retention, and retrieval, making it easier to recall information learned in emotional context. Additionally, emotions can influence the way individual approach learning tasks, either positively or negatively. Decision making. Emotions can influence the decision-making process. When faced with the decision, emotions can provide valuable information about the potential risk and benefit of various options. Emotion can also influence the way individuals weigh the importance of different factors in decision-making. Social behavior. Emotions can influence social behavior, including social interaction and relationships. For example, positive emotions such as joy or gratitude can facilitate social bonding, while negative emotions such as anger or sadness can lead to social withdrawal or conflict. Now coming to the verse number eight, innaha alaihim mosada, verily it will close in upon them. Reading it in context with the seventh verse, allati tatla al afida, that which to their heart, verily it will close up on them, that they will engulf them. These emotions that are deeds of person start to rise inside the person. These negative emotions that feels like breaking the person into pieces and cannot find any way to avoid this situation. Rather, this situation keep increasing its intensity and it feels like that the person is entrapped and engulfed with this situation. The negative emotions cover the person like a vault over. This vault feel like covering the person from all the side. This feeling is described here in this verse. Mind it, this seventh verse which is Alati Tatla Alal Afeda and before that if you remember Narulai's that fire which is started under the laws of Allah. If Allah has said that if you do wrong, it will result in wrong. And that will result of those deeds which we do. And they will come and overcome yourself. Now coming into the last one, which is the last verse of the surah, Fi Amadin Mumadda, Mumaddada, in endless column, Innaha Alayhim those guilty of these vices will be choked and suffocated for this vault of fire will cover them all over and is 
scorching columns will extend over a far wider area than they imagine. Please note that this is the whole surah is for Mormonians to understand the human psyche and how it gets affected under the capitalist outlook. Bad deeds mentioned in the surah are part of capitalistic society, but still these are practiced without the realization of their consequences. These consequences affect human beings adversely and destroy the societies. The people and the societies find themselves engulfed and trapped due to these results, for which they find themselves with no escape, these results closing upon them like walls in endless columns. I have added here these two randomly selected uh, pictures, which see when you are in adverse, the picture on the left hand side, when you are entrapped, feeling entrapped, cannot find a way out and uh, this other picture is a photograph of part of the sun where the fire is. That is that uh, the walls of fire which are so high, they are just like columns. Somehow that represent somewhere of the surah. And at the end, I'm just going to very quickly <clears throat> go through the surah so that we get the message what Allah is trying to tell. Now, I'm just going to very quickly so that you will grasp the idea. Woe to every kind of scandal monger and backbiters who pileth up wealth and lay by, thinking that this wealth will make him last forever. No, by no means, he will sure to be thrown into that which breaks into pieces. And what will explain to thee that what breaks into pieces, it is the fire of the system of Allah kindled, the which doeth mount right to the heart, it shall be made into a wall toward them, in columns overstretched. I believe that gives a whole idea of the surah that what message is being conveyed. And I have tried my best to explain it in a little bit more detail that why, for example, why this word al-afida is being used in connection with the other and also the whole of the society and human being working and the behavior of human being. Thank you very much for your time and for sharing this today. That comes to our end of the talk. Please feel free to share it with your contacts. You may like it to subscribe for future talk related to Quranic system of Deen and for contact. These are, this is the number. Thank you very much once again.